Notice is hereby given of the regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Town of Westfield in the County of Union, New Jersey at 7.30 p.m. on the evening of Tuesday, April 26, 2016 in the boardroom of the Administration Building 302 Elm Street, Westfield, New Jersey. The purpose of this meeting is to transact the regular business of the board and to transact any other business to come properly before the board. This is to advise the general public and to instruct that it be recorded in the minutes that in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975, entitled the Open Public Meetings Act, the Westfield School Board on Thursday, April 21st, 2016, caused to be posted at the office of the Board of Education located at 302 Elm Street, Westfield, New Jersey, and delivered to the Westfield Leader, the Star Ledger, the Westfield Library, Town Clerk of Westfield, Tap into Westfield, and Patch.com, a meeting notice setting forth the time, date, and location of this meeting. Danny, can we have a roll call? Mark Friedman. Here. Brendan mm -hmm. Galligan. Robert Garrison. Here. Chris Langhart. Here. Ginny Lights. Here. Gretchen Olick. Here. Peggy Oster. Here. Charles Ostroff. Here. Mitch Slater. Here. Thank you, Mitch. Can you lead us in the flag salute? Yes, absolutely. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Announcements. Rob, do you have any announcements? I do indeed. The Westfield Education Fund will hold a clothing and toy drive this Saturday, April 30th, at Roosevelt Intermediate School from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. All clothing, accessories, shoes, bedding, linens, stuffed animals, small toys, and bicycles will be accepted. The items will be distributed to those in need. All of the funds raised from the collection will be used to support teacher grants that encourage innovative programs within the Westfield School District. Contact Ed Fund at westfieldnj.com with any questions. Thank you, Chris. Yes, thank you, Gretchen. Uh, this relates to Edison Intermediate School. <clears throat> Nine students from Edison Intermediate School in Westfield had their artwork displayed on April 8th at the Union County Youth Art Month exhibit. Held at the Elizabethtown Gas Company, the exhibit honored art education in the county. The students whose works were on display included eighth graders Tara, Makia, Jessica Reutman, Amaya Johnson and Harshita Garg. Seventh graders Jacob Wendler, Julia Osman, Addison Ernst, and Jack Kelisoglu. I hope I got that right. And sixth grader <coughs> Ashley Hu. Our teachers Helen Fries and Allison Hooper attended the reception with their students. So congratulations to those students. Okay. Uh, congratulations to Westfield's Odyssey of the Mind teams who completed the state tournament in Ewing, New Jersey on April 9th. These four teams from Westfield will now be advancing to the World Finals, which will be held in Iowa at the end of May. Um, Edison Intermediate School won first place in Division I, No Cycle Recycle. Team members included Michael Fisher, Clara Yu, Chloe Yu, William Crowell, Ted Crowell, and Ian Lorne. Tamaqua School captured second place in No Cycle Recycle. Division I team members are Ariana Keith, Avery Keith, Joey Gamba, Catherine Collins, Miller Moore, and Zach Purcell. Ederson Intermediate School earned second place in Something Fishy, Division II. Team members included Hannah Cherry, Andrew Cherry, a lot of brother-sister teams, uh, Ome Sadakar, Sayi Sadakar, Stamati Angelides, I hope I get the name right, Audrey Heber, or Heber and Emily Mautone. And Ederson Intermediate School placed second in ASOP Gone Viral. And team members were Amanda Rosenthal, Meredith Rosenthal, Sophie Tsekhoff, Finn North, Kavya Penjuani, Roberto Panaro, and Eric Mordkovic. Congratulations to all for Odyssey of the Mind. An excellent, excellent program. Thanks, Mitch. Mm -hmm. Jenny. I do have, I have something on uh, Westfield High School. We offer our congratulations to High's Eye for earning more awards and recognitions. <clears throat> Westfield High School's weekly newspaper received a first class honor rating from the National Scholastic Press Association. The Columbia Scholastic Press Association bestowed a collective award for High's Eye's work during the 2014-2015 school year. Students Catherine Gillen, Abby Hurwitz, Brian Jackler and Kelly Weber received individual recognitions from the Columbia Press Association. We are so honored to have High's Eye as our high school student newspaper. They continue to do excellent work. 
Yes, they do. Charles, do you have any announcements? Yes, I do. Edison Intermediate School will hold its first community service day on Saturday, April 30th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Participants of all ages are invited to this free event with over 15 hands-on community service-related projects that include writing letters to our troops, assembling a rain barrel, making meals for a homeless shelter, assembling care kits for the homeless, and making dog toys for a local dog rescue. For questions or additional information, please call Lisa Blit at Lisa Blit at iCloud.com. Yes, is it? <coughs> Congratulations to current tennis coach and retired Westfield High School math teacher George Kavner for being inducted into the New Jersey Scholastic Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Mr. Kaffner coached two championships in girls soccer, two in boys swimming, and four in boys tennis. In total, he has coached 68 varsity teams and he continues to coach tennis. Also inducted into the Hall of Fame was former coach Walt Clarkson. Thanks, Mark. Congratulations to Westfield High School's Youth and Government Club for earning the Outstanding Delegation Award, as well as several team and individual honors in Trenton this month. A total of 42 Westfield High School students, accompanied by teachers, advisors, uh, Daniel Farabal and David De La Farra, participated in the Youth and Government Conference held April 15th through the 17th at the State House. They competed against more than 20 New Jersey high schools. Albert Chen received the Outstanding State Person Award, and Felicia Murmur was named Premier Youth Secretariat. The conference is intended to simulate legislation and afford student gel delegates the opportunity to debate relevant matters to state government. Isabella, uh, Isabel Lee, Felicia Murmur, and Juliana Yang won awards for outstanding legislation. Successfully passing their bills into law at the conference were Jeffrey Yang, Nicole Eisenberg, Felicia Murmur, and Albert Chen. Five Westfield High School students were selected to attend the Council on National Affairs in North Carolina this summer. Austin Chen, Isabella Gelfand, Ben Halevi, Brianna Reinhardt, and Ellie Smith. Samantha Della Ferra and Felicia Murmur were selected as alternates for the Council. A number of Westfield uh, eighth graders attended as junior legislators this year through the Westfield uh, YMCA. One of them, Kaylee Zhao, a seventh grade at Edison seventh grader at Edison Intermediate School, was named Outstanding Junior Legislator. The 2016 Westfield High School officers, who spent the past year preparing for and organizing the event and its related days of service, included seniors Isabella Galfan, Frank Guerrero, Brianna Reinhardt, and Ellie Smith, and junior Raffaella Leitamaki. Elected as officers for the 2017 Youth and Government Confer Conference, were Ben Halevi and Raffaella Leitamaki. Still going. In addition to the significant <laughs> student awards, David Della Ferra, English teacher at Westfield High School and longtime advisor to the Young and Government Club, received the Sly Award for Excellence. This is given to one adult advisor each year in recognition of their long-term contributions to the program. It is the biggest honor the conference bestows on an adult advisor. The Youth and Government Program has been run by the YMCA since 1936. Marty Collett is the Westfield YMCA YAG coordinator. Thank you. Very nice. Peggy. Um, I also have an announcement from the high school. Um, performing Arts Department, congratulations to Westfield High School students who were accepted into the New Jersey All-State Mixed Chorus and Treble Chorus. These students were accepted from over 1,100 students who auditioned over the past two weekends. The 2016 All-State Mixed Chorus includes Noah Bram, Alex Sestero, Joseph Maldonado, Catherine Moore, Abby Rothenberg, Matt Serrati, and Max Wazalewski. The Mixed Chorus performs alongside the All-State Orchestra at the Teachers' Convention in Atlantic City, as well as at New Jersey PAC the following Sunday. The 2017 All-State Treble Chorus includes Allison Brown, Olivia McElhenry, Nicole Player, and Emma Stern. And the Treble Chorus performs at New Jersey PAC alongside the All-State Band in February of 2017. So we look forward to that. 
And the, uh, the Optimus Club of Westfield sponsors awards for an intermediate school teacher, one from Edison School and one from Roosevelt School. The deadline for letters of nomination is this coming Friday, April 29th. The letters of nomination can be sent to my office or they can also be emailed to Opti Award, O-P-T-I Award, at westfieldnjk12.org. Uh, anyone is eligible, any of the intermediate teachers, if they have been a full-time teacher in grades six through eight who has taught in Westfield for a minimum of five years. So please send in those letters of nomination. Uh, the next Board of Education meeting will be on Tuesday, May 10th. Location and time will be determined once the Phil Howe Award winner has been selected. Uh, we'll meet at the elementary school that corresponds to the teacher who will be receiving that fellowship and will also be honoring the boys' championship swim team at that meeting. So before we get to the regular portion of our meeting, I'm going to turn it over to Dana to do the public hearing on the 1617 budget. Right. So first I want to just do a brief presentation. It's, it's just a summary of what we've been talking about. Um, the entire budget was advertised in the Westfield Leader last Thursday, um, as well as an announcement of tonight's public hearing. Um, so just as a reminder, we've been talking about the budget since November. Um, in November 17th, the board had our first workshop where we developed the goals for the budget, um, and that continued on through um, administrators and um, supervisors have been discussing the budget during that time period. Um, the budget was then presented again to the board in February um, and March, several meetings. Um, March 15th, the board adopted the tentative budget, which was submitted <coughs> to the Union County Executive Superintendent, um, and we received approval from them a, a week later. Um, and as I stated, we advertised in the budget last week, um, and I mean in the paper last week, and tonight is our final hearing and adoption of the budget. So the goals for the budget this year were maintaining <coughs> programs at the current level of excellence, maintaining all of our current class sizes, um, continuing our commitment to technology and improving the infrastructure for technology in the district, um, and delivering a responsible budget to the taxpayers of Westfield. Um, and we did achieve these goals. Our total operating revenue for the year is um, slightly over $100 million. Um, and you can see 94% of that is coming from local taxes. Um, approximately 4% is from state aid. Um, and then there's other various um, revenue sources there. The fund balance, the amount of fund balance that we've been appropriating as revenue in the budget, we purposely have reduced to 750000 as our budgets are getting tighter and tighter each year, um, and we don't think we can sustain appropriating that level of funds in every budget for the next coming years, um, we've been making an effort to reduce that slightly. So from this current year to next year, we've reduced the amount of fund balance from $1 million to 750000 in the revenue. Um, and we will still maintain a fund balance of 2% that will be held um, for emergencies in case something should come up, you know, in the future. Um, and we also do have some funds, as I presented last week, um, last board meeting, I'm sorry, in the capital reserve account and the maintenance reserve account um, for any facility type emergencies that could arise. The tax impact, um, we actually went up 2.1%. Um, there is a cap of 2% on the operating budget. We are allowed to adjust that slightly um, due to increases in health insurance. Um, our debt service actually went down um, due to additional state aid that we received. So overall, our tax rate increase was 2.1%, um, and it's approximately um, $194 to an average homeowner in Westfield. Um, just to talk about health insurance for one second, we, as you, as the board recalls, July of last year, we self-insured our health insurance um, because in the past we had seen 13 to 15 percent premium increases um, in health insurance, and not only were we increasing our our taxes by more than 2.1 percent, we were also forced to make reductions in other areas of the budget. This is the first year in about six years that we haven't seen, at least six years, that we haven't seen reductions to actual programs in the, in the district, instructional programs in the district. 
So it's important to note um, that bec largely due to that self-insuring of our health insurance, we've been able to control that cost um, and don't see any major reductions at all. The expenditure side of the budget, um, again, is also $100 million. 61.2% um, of that is directly for instruction, um, and that's teachers um, and uh, support in the classroom. Um, but you'll note in the other areas, CST-related services and extraordinary services, that's child study team-related services and extraordinary services directly for students. Um, so if you add up, well, and support services, technology, most of that is also for student <coughs> support. Um, so a large part of our budget does go directly for um, classroom instruction. Um, we still maintain our cost, cost per pupil um, well below the state average. So Westfield's cost per pupil is $13,140. Um, the state average, as you can see there in red, is $14,543. Um, and there's various school districts that are similar in size to us. So these are all districts that would be K-12 districts with over 3,501 students. Um, this comes directly from the New Jersey Department of Education. Um, they take audited data that is sent to them from the school district's auditors directly to them um, and prepare this data. Um, this has been updated just recently, just last week. I didn't update this because I didn't want to show something different than I've been showing for the last several board meetings and cause confusion. confusion. But the numbers, everybody increased slightly and we're in the same place as we would, as we are now. We're still number four on the chart um, compared to these other districts. And just to highlight the funds that we use, as I said, most of our, our budget is directed to the classroom and directly for students. Um, and this is a list of just some of the accomplishments. And we do see every board meeting we heard a bunch of the accomplishments tonight read by all the board members so we are uh, putting the money to good use the other public hearing that we're having this evening is on a bond, bond refinancing um, at the last board meeting we talked about a series 2006 bond that had an average interest rate of four percent it is now eligible to be refinanced um, this is the first time that we're actually el eligible by state law to refinance this. Um, because interest rates are so low right now, um, we believe that we would get an interest rate well below 2%. Um, so even after paying for refinancing costs, we think refinancing this bond will save us $350,000. Um, we are required to have a public hearing on this as well. This public hearing was also advertised in the Westfield Leader. Um, and tonight would be, if the board approves it, this will be the final adoption. And uh, in the next couple of months, we would move forward with refinancing these bonds. And that concludes the presentation. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions from the board? I'll just make one comment. I wanted to thank uh, Dana and uh, Chairman Freeman for providing information to the members pertaining to bond refunding. I know I'd asked for the info being a little bit of a pain sometimes, uh, but I do appreciate the numbers were, uh, were excellent uh, for, the, for the refunding that you're doing. All Dana. Yes. I'm glad to see that the guiding change document that we're using for the second year in a row seems to be working well and yes. ensuring the process is smooth and we're approaching it early on, so. Yep. Um, does anyone from the public have any questions? Okay, then Mark, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Uh, we're going to do personnel first, right? Uh, I think we need to no, do the, the bond. Uh, the, the bond. Budget. bond comes first on the agenda, but yeah. it's actually there. And yeah. I think you should do the budget and the bond separate. Okay. So I'd like the um, board to uh, consider item number one um, for the uh, pass the adoption of the 2016-2017 uh, school year budget and tax levy. Do I have a second? Ginny, thanks. Any comments or questions? Okay. Mark okay. Friedman. Yes. Brendan Galligan. Yes. Robert Garrison. Yes. Chris Langhart. Yes. Jenny Lights. Yes. Gretchen Oleg. Yes. Peggy Oster. Yes. Charles Ostroff. Yes. Mitch Slater. Yes. Okay, and then uh, number two, I'd like the board to consider um, 
to approve for second reading and final adoption of the following uh, refunding bond ordinance, which is listed in the agenda and what Dana uh, explained to us previously. Second. Uh, thanks. Who was the second? Garrison. Garrison. Any questions, comments? Okay, Dana. Mark Friedman. Yes. Brendan Galligan. Yes. Robert Garrison. Yes. Chris Leinhart. Uh, I recuse myself from that and abstain from voting. Ginny Lights. Yes. Gretchen Oleg. Yes. Peggy Astor. Yes. Charles Ostrov. Yes. Mitch Slater. Yes. All right. Great. That uh, having been done, we'll return to our regular business agenda and I'll recognize the public for any agenda items. Seeing no one come to the podium, I'd ask the board to approve the minutes of the board meeting held on April 5th, 2016 and the private minutes of April 5th, 2016. Can I have a second? Jenny, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Personnel, Mark, we're back to you. Okay. I'd like the board to consider personnel items 1 through 19, uh, 15 through 19 are at an addendum at your desk. Jenny, thank you for a second. Any comments or questions? Dana? Mark please. Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Yes. Chris Langhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Yes. Gretchen Olick? Yes. Peggy Astor? Yes. Charles Astra? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. That's it from personnel. Great. Facilities. Brendan? Yes. I'd like the board to, to approve item number one. Can I have a second? Dana? Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Yes. Chris Langhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Yes. Gretchen Oluk? Yes. Peggy Astor? Yes. Charles Ostrov? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. Brendan, anything else? That's it. Um, long range planning. Can I can I just update on yes, this the solar good. before we move? Yeah, thank the, you. Um, so we've been the our attorneys have been working on the um, contracts for the solar project. They're very complicated just because of the type of project it is where they're installing the solar panels and they're going to own them and we're going to benefit from buying electricity cheaper. Um, but we are very close to having that finalized. Within the next couple of weeks, we should have the contracts finalized. Um, in the meantime, the contractor has been working on plans and we are going to appear before the Westfield Planning Board next Monday night. So we are on track and we should be moving forward with that project this summer. So we have to go before the planning board. How is this different? I guess I'm just curious. Just it's, we kind of go as a courtesy. It's, it, I've never seen a planning board actually have real authority over the Board of Ed. Um, but as a courtesy, we go and let them review the plans. And, and, and I assume that's what we do when we redid the roofs? With the roofs, you don't have to yeah. go. You didn't have to. It's okay. certain projects you have to go. All right. Okay, thank you for that update. Uh, long range planning. I have nothing on the calendar at the moment, but Dr. Dolan, I know you'll let me know yes. when you're ready to schedule we'll a Schedule meeting. a date in the first half of May. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, policies, Chris. Uh, yeah, policies committee met last Tuesday. I apologize, I haven't gotten notes from the meeting out, but I'll get it out this week. Uh, we will have some comments on the extracurricular policies. Uh, so you get that this week. Uh, for tonight, I'd like the board to consider approving for first reading the following two policies. 5339, screening for dyslexia, and 5500, conduct, discipline code of conduct. And if you remember last time we were here, we had a meeting uh, last month where people came in and commented on the code of conduct. It was very productive. These are the changes to that uh, policy. Any questions? Second. May I give you a second? Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Yes. Chris Langhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Yes. Gretchen Olig? Yes. Peggy Astor? Yes. Charles Astro? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. Uh, second matter, I'd like the board to consider for approval the affirmation of the superintendent's decision on HIV incidents 16M02, 16M03, and 16E11 for the reasons set forth in each of those reports. I have a second. Jenny. Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Yes. Chris Leinhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Yes. Gretchen Olig? Yes. Peggy Oster? Yes. Charles Ostrov? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. Uh, nothing else to report. Great. Chris? Uh, 
curriculum instruction and program. Peggy. Um, I'd like the board to consider items one and two under curriculum. Do I have a second? Jenny, thank you. <laughs> trying to set a record. Just <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep us moving. <laughs> Um, I think she owns the record. I think I did uh, circulate minutes Breaker. from the uh, curriculum meeting, which was held last Thursday. And once again, we had presentations by some amazing teachers at, from both high school, Roosevelt, and in reference to the gifted program. So I support both of these um, readings of curriculum. Any questions? Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Barbara Garrison? Yes. Chris Winghart? <coughs> yes. Jeannie Lights? Yes. Gretchen Olig? Yes. Peggy Oster? Yes. Charles Ostroff? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. Um, finance, Mark. I'd like the board to consider finance items one through, four, uh, one through 14. 14 was uh, on the addendum at your table. Second, Jenny, thank you. Um, just a couple of call-outs on, uh, on some gifts. I uh, would like to uh, accept the gift of $9,108 from the Westfield Coalition for the Arts to purchase five new baritones for the Westfield High School Marching Band. Uh, also, uh, a gift of $3,556 also from the Westfield Coalition for the Arts to purchase new sound equipment for the Westfield High School Choir and Orchestra. Uh, and then also... Uh, from the, also from the Westfield Coalition for the Arts, $350 to fund an artware ceramic tile project for the Tamaka School fourth graders. So thanks uh, for your generosity. Any other comments or questions? Dana, please. Wait, can I, oh, I'm sorry. sorry, I do have a question. Um, but only because I didn't focus on it until tonight. Rick has looked at and approved the agreement with Seton Hall? Yes. Okay. Okay. Mark, Mark Friedman? Yes. Brendan Galligan? Yes. Robert Garrison? Yes. Chris Leinhart? Yes. Ginny Lights? Yes. Gretchen Olig? Yes. Peggy Astor? Yes. Charles Ostroff? Yes. Mitch Slater? Yes. Sorry, I keep forgetting I'm supposed to move along. Anything else? No, ma'am. <laughs> uh, legislation, Brendan? No report. No report. Technology, Mitch? Um, I'm actually going to let Jenny take it. Jenny ran the uh, meeting last <laughs> week uh, in my absence. So. Jenny. Yes. Um, yes, I'm sorry to say that we, we didn't have a full complement of committee members, but in order to um, make sure that we were uh, using the time of our administrators and master technology teachers appropriately, I did hold the meeting. Um, so I did represent the board independently. It's not usually my... Um, my wish to be the sole board member there, but in the essence of the fact that um, our committee members were available, I felt it was appropriate, and we had canceled a few previous meetings. Uh, the minutes are, or the, the notes are on their way to you, um, but I will basically um, summarize them at the moment. So the, our, our schools are on their way to becoming a full Google Classroom school district, and that is, I think, the the major message from our technology meeting. We're using Google Classroom and Google Apps for Education as our digital learning and classroom management platform. Uh, we're not complete in its use, but we are um, making strong inroads at all of our education levels, and this is what we're, if, if we had a strategy, if you want to call it a strategy, this is what our rollout is, is uh, doing right now. From the intermediate and elementary <coughs> schools, uh, Janine Gatko was representing us as the master technology teacher. Uh, the social studies department at the level of the intermediate schools has made strong inroads giving students access to Google Classroom accounts. Um, that's really where our major push is at the moment. And uh, Mr. Panero will be discussing rollout of Bring Your Own Device next year into the intermediate schools with the principals at both Edison and, and Roosevelt. Um, this is something that will be kind of feeling our way through uh, the use of uh, student devices to see how they not only can be integrated into the classroom for educational purposes, but also how we manage the security of them and um, the equitable use of them so that those students who don't have them uh, are allowed to use those that 
devices that we may have on hand. Um, although that was uh, identified as not a problem currently. In the elementary schools, the district is now using a fully web-based platform for everyday math, supported by a district-wide subscription. Our social studies program is called Social Studies Alive, and it uses an online textbook that includes teacher e-presentations. Students are also using the internet access to engage in podcasting, e-publishing, STEM topics, and coding. Many fifth grade classes are learning and using Google Classroom and Google Apps for Education. And that is in preparation for the extended use of these applications when they get to sixth grade, starting next September in their intermediate schools. In addition, there is some piloting use of um, these platforms in the fourth and third grades. Uh, of course, this summer we do anticipate the wireless upgrade in our elementary schools. And um, just as an aside, we noted that with the fact that PARC had been uh, part of our requirement in the last several years, this has stimulated our upgraded internet strength and the growth in the use of devices. For the high school update, many teachers are also using Google Classroom and or Google Apps for Education. And I think we mentioned before there's a cohort of about eight teachers who have been using one-to-one -one Chromebook accessible classroom environments for their students. This is different from a one-to-one -one initiative where the students actually are given uh, devices. The devices stay in the classroom with the teacher instead of traveling with the students so that we um, maximize the extended use of these uh, devices through multiple classrooms of students. Uh, pockets of teachers are invigorated by accessibility to the strong internet signal at the high school and a stronger wireless environment. <coughs> These teachers are mostly in the areas of English, world language, and social studies, where instructional lessons and student learning is more easily adapted and supported by use of Chromebooks. It was noted that um, there are some, or at least one ma uh, math student at the high school, a math teacher at the high school, who's interested in joining the cohort to see if they can use their Chromebook um, devices within their uh, classroom. It hadn't been thought that uh, Chromebooks would be the, a reasonable technology alternative device for math, but apparently this teacher is looking forward to trying to find some uh, adaptable use within this instruction. The Student Ambassador Program is running well. Um, Adam has found that uh, as students increase in their levels within the high school, uh, sophomore, junior, and senior year, their ability to stay uh, engaged and um, active in the ambassador program is not as strong based on their uh, rigorous studies and activities. So he's targeting uh, incoming freshmen to try to move through that program on an annual basis. That seems to be working better. Um, and there are people at the intermediate schools, administrators, who are able to identify those students who look to be upcoming um, technology capable and very interested. So that will help sustain the strength of that student ambassador program. Challenges at the high school include looking forward to what's next on the technology frontier. Be your, bring, bring your own device, BYOD. Utilizing student smart cell phones is an area being explored for broader classroom use. And as I mentioned before, Google Classroom and Google Apps for Education are gaining traction also. Um, they will require sustained training and uh, professional development. High school math teachers, as I noted, are interested in joining the cohort, the Chromebook cohort. The group discussed the value of supporting teachers in the one-to-one -one cohort with possibly a team building initiative and the challenges of how students will use their cell phones as BYOD personal devices. The committee expressed interest in providing students with fair and equi equitable access to a, a personal device in situations where they don't have one. But as I said, it, it was noted that we haven't experienced difficulty with student access up to now. We did discuss some professional development needs for the future. Um, teacher feedback and requests direct the uh, professional development that's now offered for instruction in the use of devices and the infusion of technology and instruction in student learning. Consideration is going to be given 
to updating and publishing the professional development training schedule on a more frequent basis to promote more timely response to training requests. I think now the, the PD schedule may be published annually or at least once a semester. Once a semester. Yeah. So I, my question to the committee really was if, if we're, to what extent are we receptive to um, the uh, requests that teachers may make as they go through their learning um, process about devices and technology and, and um, instructional use of, of technology. So there was some consideration that maybe they could update the PD schedule either, you know, every uh, marking period mm -hmm. or more frequently at least to give um, the ability to uh, be more responsive to teacher requests over time. Um, <clears throat> Master Tech teachers have started making, um, I'm not familiar with these, but screencast support videos uh, for training purposes, and the group discussed the value. I think it's Spreecast. Hmm? I think it's Spreecast. Spreecast? Yeah, okay. it's a streaming service. Okay. Right and mark. the group discussed the value of expanding our library of detailed instructive emails and self-help how-to videos to demonstrate the use of devices and popular instructional techniques to supplement presentations and discussions at faculty meetings. My question was, how can we broaden our connection to the teachers and, and administrators, those who want to use technology, those who want to have information about techniques that other people have used? There's so much um, video instruction that could be out there. And then there are, are also needs that we have on specific Westfield Public Schools interactions. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that we can um, supplement um, the, uh, the videos that are available and the general nature with specific videos for our own use of technology. Right. I, I know Janine has done quite a few of right. those and they're, um, they're really helpful no matter what time of day right. somebody has time with an administrator or teacher, whomever has time to look at it and sit down and have a half hour to figure out how to use this. Uh, they are we talked about the value of, of a, a demonstration um, visual for, for any learning anything right and how much more valuable it is to, to individuals than just reading uh, a list of five instructions in an email um, there was a funny little story presented where somebody said that they had sent the email with five instructions and the person called and said I know you sent this to me, could you describe it? And so the person basically read the same instructions. <laughs> the individual on the other end of the phone write, wrote them down themselves and then said, oh, I think I can do this. <laughs> it's, a, it's human nature, I suppose, that, that when, when you finally stop and think about what it is you're trying to do and, and involve yourself in instructions, you get it. Okay. Um, regarding the status of IP communication system and our uh, network upgrades for the elementary schools, cabling and rough in for the new clocks and PA systems underway. In Roosevelt now, the hallways are essentially done. Efforts will move next to Edison. The installation will be completed this summer um, in all of our schools when all the classrooms are accessible. Cabling for the clocks and PA systems in the elementary schools will be done this summer in conjunction with cabling for the wireless access. And by doing this work concurrently, they're pulling two cables at once. This will save us approximately $27,000 in the total of the combined projects. There is a, um, a three-year technology plan. The New Jersey State uh, Department of Education used to require that, uh, that districts develop it and then that boards uh, approve it every three years. This is no longer the case, however, we will use the state issued guidelines and templates to develop our own plan, and that will help support our shared understanding of the current status of our technology and a projected strategy throughout the district. So I guess that's going to be done and maybe available by September. I believe so, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then um, just to end up, there is, was a meeting scheduled for May 6th for the technology committee, and we agreed that um, we really don't need that meeting. The committee will resume its work in September. So those of you who had May 6th on the calendar, you may take it off. Okay. Great. Thanks, Jenny. Uh, I'd ask the board to note the notes for the record. I have one item under unfinished business. I, I wanted to 
close the loop on the proposal brought to the brought to us by the Westfield Soccer Association. God bless regarding the use of temporary lights at Kaler Field. As you will recall, hours before the board was going to vote on the proposal, which was recommended by the facilities committee on, of the board, we received a letter from a lawyer representing the Kaler Neighborhood Preservation Association. This letter suggested that the board was required to re obtain approval from the town for the use of temporary lights on board property. While we felt certain that this was not the case, especially given the ruling from the Mountainside Courts on summonses that were filed against us last year, the association's lawyer referenced two recent, or a recent court case that gave us pause. We did not believe it would be prudent to move forward without consulting counsel on the recent case law, and accordingly, the proposed uh, vote was tabled. We've received confirmation that our position remains valid. We do not, in fact, need the town's approval to move forward. The town concurs with our position. However, the delay has rendered the possibility of moving forward moot. There's no point in us taking any steps this season. If the Westfield Soccer Association or any other organization brings forth a similar proposal next year, we'll determine how to proceed at that time. Of course, it would fall first to the facilities committee, as it always does, and then a recommendation would be made to the full board. And in weighing any such proposal, we'll be mindful of the use of district resources uh, in terms of whether we should further litigate this matter. That will always be a consideration on our part. So anybody else have any questions pertaining to that or unfinished business? Um, new business. Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, procedurally, do we need to do anything to untable that? I don't know. I mean, since it was tabled, it's not currently for consideration, so we don't have to bring it back up and then withdraw it. I think it's sufficient. Dana? Yeah, agree. Okay. Uh, Mitch, go ahead. Okay, great. Um, under new business, I have a brief announcement, uh, and I will keep this short and have some more to say in June. But due to work-related projects this fall, I've decided to uh, end my term a few months early. So effective June 30th, I will be stepping down from my position on the Westfield Board of Education. When I ran for the Board of Ed in April 2010, I said I would serve no more than two terms if elected, which I personally think is an appropriate amount of time to begin to affect change and help make a difference for our over 6,000 students great administrators, and of course, the taxpayers of Westfield who voted to put us all in these chairs to serve. Being given the chance by the voters of Westfield to serve on the Board of Education has been one of the most rewarding parts of my life. I've been extremely fortunate to work with 15 different board members since 2010, including the eight that currently sit beside me here at the table. The teamwork, dedication, and commitment of all of these very busy professionals has been nothing but remarkable, including many at this table who recently went into the middle of the night to do their job, <laughs> which is really remarkable. Um, I also wanted to specifically thank our wonderful superintendent and Dana Sullivan, our rock star business administrator <laughs> over there. Um, one of, um, proud of many of our hires since uh, I've joined the board, but no, no prouder than, than that one, Dana. Um, so I wanted to thank you, both of which I really don't believe we could actually open the doors every day at our schools without either of you. I truly mean that. I've learned a great deal sitting here from my fellow board members, from the 15 and, as I said, the current that are sitting here. Um, participating, chairing the technology committee, and most of all, how challenging it is to maintain the excellence of our Westfield schools with limited funding, increasing labor and healthcare costs, and constant educational and facilities related needs. Quite a challenge. One of which I know will continue at this table daily. A local New Jersey musician that most of you know that I have a bit of a passion for, gave an interview a few years back and said that one problem with the way the educational system is in America is set up is that it only recognizes a certain type of intelligence and it's incredibly restrictive. There's so many types of intelligence and people would be at their best outside of that structure get lost. He then wrote a song using the lyrics, we learn more from a three minute record than we ever learned in school. While I might agree with Bruce on the three-minute record part from my own education in the 1970s, 
Um, that is just not the case here in Westfield. That is what I am most proud of about from my time here on the board. Westfield is not restrictive. Every student matters, and the overwhelming majority of our teachers give their students the best education and opportunities possible every single day, and administrators, and, have played, and to have played a minor role in maintaining that over the last six years makes me very proud indeed. So I thank all of you at the table personally, and again, I thank all of you in Westfield for giving me this opportunity, and I'll have a few more things to say prior to graduation, I guess, in, in June. But thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. Absolutely. Thank you. And I think as some of us have privately communicated to you, you will be missed. Um, and I look forward to the opportunity for us to send you off with many more words uh, in June. But we're going to suck every minute out of you until then. Please, <laughs> please do. Please do. Um, and we'll, in accordance with our bylaws, um, we are compelled to, feel, to fill the seat that Mitch will be vacating uh, the six months that will remain on his term. And so, much like we've done in the past, we will solicit, we'll give notice, we'll solicit community members who are interested in participating uh, for interviews. They'll submit their resume and then we'll, uh, we'll talk to them and we'll make a decision as a board as to who will fill that seat, but more to come on that. Yes, and I would certainly welcome all Westfield residents to consider <laughs> this if you haven't. Um, I would just add that this was not on, you know, something that was on my agenda, was not something that I was thinking about one approached six years ago, and I, I thank those who approached me, and I think each of us at the table probably had a similar situation. Um, and if you are out there, whether you're involved directly in the school system or just a resident of Westfield, public service matters and we need good people. Okay. Thanks. Any other new business? How about liaison reports? Jenny? I attended Union County School Boards Association association meeting um, maybe last week they had a um, their annual legislators advocacy meeting <clears throat> once again I was disappointed with the uh, really? yes yes with the with the agenda and with the um, the uh, the interaction of the legislators um, two showed up one left after identifying himself <clears throat> and the one who stayed was the um, least uh, senior legislator in the state. So rather than being able to respond to a question of how can we help you <laughs> by telling you what we need, all we heard was, well, you can help me by standing by me as I learn what I'm doing. Not necessarily what you want to hear when you're learning about trying to connect to advocacy for your district at a county meeting. Sorry to say, I'm not really getting much out of this association right now. Hmm. That's disappointing. It is disappointing. Brenda, but I'll keep going. No, no, no. I, I saw the agenda and <coughs> decided to <what's> <laughs> Well, I appreciate you attending. I know that I, I was hopeful that it would be more productive. So I, I, I'm glad well, you It wasn't the agenda that was, that was off-putting. It was the fact that, that we really didn't have connected legislators. Well, the, they, they announced the legislators. And not seeing anybody high ranking on the on either education committee or really anybody with any clout. No. No. Yeah. All right, well, thank you. We'll keep giving it a try, but they got to do more for me. Quickly losing interest. Hmm. Any other liaison reports? Uh, I'd like to recognize the public for questions and or comments. Um, seeing no one come to the podium, I would move that the board approve the following resolution, be it resolved that the Board of Education move into private session for the purpose of discussing a possible harassment, intimidation, and bullying incident, and resolve that any discussion held by the board which need not remain confidential, and the results <coughs> of the discussion will be made public as soon as practical. Can I have a second? Jenny, thank you all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? We are in private session.